I consider myself, lady, I consider myself to be a pretty good bus driver. Actually, I'm pretty good at it. Funny the things you think about. Hello, come on in. Two seconds. Come on. Man. Funny the things you get your fat head out of the way. Funny the things you think about when you're driving the bus. Oh, you know, yesterday I was thinking about someone in the UK I knew when I was a kid, and it was in my mind, and I thought I got to make that into a video. That's that's funny. It's funny. I got to tell that story because it's funny. This person, it doesn't matter who they are, I'll tell you that later. This person, when I think about it and now I look back on my life when I was a kid, this person influenced me more than what they knew. In the UK they have a word called Larry. It means basically to run around without control, confused, like when the kids are acting crazy, like don't be Larry. That, that's what it means. I think we can safely assume that I was reasonably Larry as a kid. And um, where am I going with this? I've got to think where I'm going because it was just funny on the bus and I really wanted to tell it and now I'm sitting here in my kitchen and it's not three o'clock in the morning driving the bus peace and quiet. It's, diff you know, it's just a different situation. The person I'm talking about is Peter Anderson. I was lucky that when last time I was in the UK I got to see Peter Anderson. Jane and Leslie Martin's dad, and we were, they were Jane and Leslie, and like the, like my family and the sisters in the UK in lots of ways. So, and Pete had a great sense of humour. I think as growing up, Pete would sit around and watching the football, and he and he would go, "Why don't you watch the football with me?" I goes, "I'm not watching the football, Uncle Pete." He go and he would literally go, "No, because you look running around like a maniac, like you got a firework up your ass, stupid boy." I'm just. And I would laugh when I was thinking about him yesterday. And the reason I'm telling this is because I remember when we used... Uncle Pete and my mum were best friends. Pete was happily married, so they were just friends and nothing more. It wasn't confusing, it was just they were just really good friends. And as a little kid, I'm just going to demonstrate a way to you that they were good friends. As I remember I was about seven or eight years old, and my mum, would give, my mum gave me this card and goes, look what Pete sent me. And she gave me this card, and it was a picture of an old guy holding two spoons like this and it had a couple of raisins on it and it said when your tits look like this you know you're old happy birthday and I'm like what and I just laughed because I was a little kid and that you know it was new to me that kind of humor but Uncle Pete Pete Anderson would take my brother and myself and Martin fishing let me turn the radio off Sorry, I want to. I'm not going to. I'm not starting this again. It's going to have to play. So Pete would take us fishing. All right. When Pete would take us fishing. When Pete would take us fishing, I would have huge trouble sitting still. And in the UK, when you go fishing, I come from the Fens in the UK, which is some of the greatest fishing in the UK. And one thing that Peter did have in common with myself and Martin and my brother was the fact that we all went fishing together. He had, he was a, he had a great sense of humour. So I want you to picture the riverbank in the UK. This is the riverbank, and the bushes actually overlap the bank like this. They're actually hang over the wall. And then they cut a little alcove in the bushes. So you sit in your little alcove, and you go like this, and 50, 25 feet away is another little alcove cut in the bushes. And then I would sit on my little basket. I had a basket that was about the size of that microwave that you see, wherever that is there. And as a little eight-year-old kid, I would sit on my basket, and I'd put my rod in my rod rest, and I would sit on my basket, and I would look at my little float like this. And the float, and fishing, ocean fishing is catching 40-pound or 50-pound salmon. is not like fishing in fresh water in the UK. It's, it's a game of stealth. It's amazing what you you look back and you realise, and you would look this, and the fish, your little your little float would go like this, and you knew that something was picking at your little maggot. It was, that's how it was a game of stealth. So I'd be grabbing bits of mud, throwing it at my brother, or Martin would throw mud at me, and we'd all be jackass. And Pete would come and sit down next to me and go, "Look, concentrate, boy." You can be a good fisherman. You catch a bigger one than me, I'll kill you. And just and I'd laugh. So I would sit there, watching the float go like 
this. And people go, you got something, just keep waiting for the float. And then your float would go, this was the theory, your float would disappear like this and you'd yank the line and you'd wind it in and then you'd pose with your picture by the, by the river. So, you know, the thought of me catching a bigger fish than Pete was, that was gold, man. Let's kept one bigger than Pete. He would never live it down. So Pete would be down there, my brother would be there, and we'd be there, and, and then you would lean out around the bushes like this, and you would look to see someone else's float down there going up and down, and you would do that. Anyway, um, and by the way, when we went out, you have to Google this. When, when we went out fishing with Pete, my mum would put me in my best monkey boots, which are like Dr. Martin's, but much thinner leather, and then your pants, your trousers, your trousers would be up here like this, so you could see your socks and your big boots. And then we would wear these jumpers to keep us warm in the cold winter. It was not raining, but it was just cold. And they would be like crochet jumpers. And mine was blue and white. And my brother's was brown and cream. And you literally, I went and got this. It literally looked like this. This was me. One arm sticking out of here. One arm sticking out of, one arm sticking out of here. My little head on top. And this was me wearing something like this, going fishing with Uncle Pete. So... One day, I'm sitting there on my basket, I'm messing around, not paying attention, I'm not looking at my float, this is, yeah, whatever. And my basket and myself and my rod, because you grab everything, I fell in the water, the whole lot went in the water. So the current was moving really slowly. So <laughs> the current was moving really slowly. So, yeah, you know. My fishing rod went by Uncle Pete like this. The fishing rod would come by. And then I, I was a little way from the bank so I could see in a little bit and I'd see the top of Pete's head go like this. This is a true story. And then my basket, which was a wicker basket, would float by. And then I saw my basket go by, go by Peter. And eventually, because you couldn't pull yourself out of the water, I was too small, it was too steep, and it were the banks, they were literally cutting the fence, you couldn't. So eventually, I literally went by Pete, like this. Hi, Uncle Pete, you caught any fish yet? <laughs> and he go, what the hell, bloody hell, boy. And I remember getting pulled out of the water, and he wasn't very happy because we all went home. Yeah, I just thought of that story last night that was funny it was those days were a good laugh and we had a great time honestly I remember those days and I remember I remember Pete Hansen he had a great sense of humor he made me laugh a lot and living with myself and Jane and Martin and Leslie and my brother all of us hanging around all the kids in the neighborhood must have been chaos what a good what a good laugh that was I, I was thinking about that last night when I floated by Uncle Pete Hi, Uncle Pete. You caught any fish yet? 